Welcome to episode 11 of the Hoop Threads podcast. I'm here with uh, Phenom photographer Jonathan uh, Iskierdo. How you doing, Johnny? Good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate, uh, um, you know, the invite and excited to chop it up with you. So thank you again. Absolutely, man. So, I mean, just uh, our intro, I mean, I don't know you that well, but we have a mutual friend, Jake Rosen. Uh, shout out to Jake. We go way back. I mean, I actually met him in, uh, I think it was 2013 or, no, I think it was 14. Uh, his freshman year at Syracuse, he was working the Bayheim camp. And uh, I've just been knowing him for, the, for all that time. He's a great dude. And uh, he mentioned he mentioned you like when I went to I told him I was going to Peach and he's like man you got to meet Johnny this kid's this kid's incredible so talk about how you got to this point um yeah for sure uh you know I think it's crazy kind of like looking back I was talking to a, a good friend of mine and I'm and we're talking about like our journeys and stuff like that and it's just like it's crazy to see how fast life can go you know and like just two and a half maybe I think maybe three years ago now um, I was like in such a different place, you know, so, uh, to kind of, you know, I, I started late in my career. Photo has never been a, a back a background for me. A lot of people are like this. So I don't want to act like I'm like this anomaly. Like that just, there's a lot of people that pick up photo and creative stuff late in life. I think a lot of that is, and this is why I like to be outspoken about things. I want to educate that, you know, young kids and young professionals, boy, boys and girls, you guys can get into photo and video and make this a career, you know? I think that when I was growing up, that wasn't really looked at or something, you know, it wasn't looked at as a, as a full-time career where I wasn't educated on it. So I had my nine to five jobs. I, I majored in, in business and public relations. So I've always like wanted to be like an entertainment and sports. Uh, so I have a nine to five background, which I, and I mentioned that a lot when I talk to people because it's helped me navigate through this, the business side of photography. So it's not just taking good pictures. It's very similar to sports. Like it's not just being a good athlete, right? You have to be good on the other end of things. That's how, that's how you'll truly like really kind of become like a dominant figure in, in what you want to do in life, you know? So I think that having a, a background in, in, in nine to five and um, the business world helped me, um, but I wasn't happy there. So I just had quit one day in August um, and, you know, I was going through a lot of like panic and anxiousness and just, it felt uncomfortable. You know, I didn't know what it was. But I just said, you I can't be here anymore. Like, this is not for me. I didn't know, though, you know. So, you know, I was doing well uh, financially. And I just, I, I never forget, like, that one day in August, I think it was August 6th or 7th, 2016, I quit my job. My mom was freaking out, like any mother would do. <laughs> and for me, it was very, like, um, it was a scary time. But I also didn't realize, you know, what was to come. So I was just kind of going with life, right? Um, months down the road. I was still, it was the next year turn 2017 and I was like trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life. And then I never forget my mom asked me to, uh, she, she told me, she said, why don't you get a hobby? You know, like get your mind off things. I said, all right, cool. That sounds like a good idea. And I had a camera, like, you know, like a T3i Canon, like just a point, regular uh, base camera. And I would start taking pictures of like the landscapes and stuff in, in Hoboken or New Jersey city, like right outside of New York, just to have context of everyone. I, I live in New Jersey. I'm in a small town in New Jersey and I fell in love with it. So that's the moment I fell in love with it. Um, as that journey progressed, you know, I started wanting to educate myself more in photography and, and, and learning. And I started shooting everything, man. Like I remember I have a Facebook status that I always kind of say just to remind me. And it was March, 2017. And I was literally begging people to let me photograph them. I was like, I'll photograph your food. I'll photograph your wedding, your engagement, your newborns, whatever you need. Let me know. You know, I was literally begging. And, um, you know, as the time went on, I, I picked up a bartending job with my, one of my best friends, Steve, and he was just helping me out. And then uh, my good friend, excuse me, my, my friend who became my good friend, Trevor Harris, he runs this program called Northeast Basketball Club here in New Jersey. It's a lot of elite talent. Um, he had came into the bar one day just by chance and we were catching up and, uh, and he just asked me, hey, what was I, what was, what was I doing, what I, what I have going on? And then um, I told him, and he's like, have you ever done sports? And I was like, no, but, you know, I would love to. I love sports. I always, was always into, like, grassroots basketball and, like, like Rivals.com and, like, who's going where. I'm always into that shit. And um, he, I never forget, he invited me. I saw who he had on his – I looked at his program, and I was like, oh, wow, he has a lot of top high, highly ranked kids. Um, and then I, he, he invited me to one of his games over at Dykeman. So if, if you guys don't know who, what Dykeman is, it'd be like Rucker Park, but it's like, it's like the epitome of like 
New York basketball and like in the summer. Like if you, if you can be there, you're like, you're, you're going to be blown away. So I went there not knowing what was going on, not understanding what was about to happen because mind you, at that time in 2017, July, um, so I'm coming up literally on, on three years, wow. Um, that time in July in 2017, Slam, Overtime, BR Hoops, all these outlets, that stuff wasn't really how, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't how it is right now. So th but this was the beginning, it was gonna start. That, that whole wave was about to start. Now that I look back, you know, those outlets weren't capitalizing on the grassroots market. And I learned this because when I went there and I photographed and I was like, well, this is fun, it's cool. And then Trevor would send the photos to his kids and then they would start posting and tagging me. And I would notice I was getting a lot of traction on my page, but on my page, it had like weddings, a skyline food, a bunch <laughs> of different shit. I didn't know how to brand myself yet. Cause I didn't know what I was wanted to shoot. Yeah. So I was like, wait, what's going on? And I started looking at these, these, these players, Nas Reed, Javon Kernley, Luke King, Luther Muhammad, Ron Harper Jr. I'm like, man, these kids have such a big following. Like why? I didn't understand what was going on. So just to paint the picture for everyone, I came into the, I came into it and this, and the social age for these players was starting to happen. And the, and the social and the, and these media outlets were starting to happen. So we kind of almost came in, in it together. I, and I, and I say that because a lot of like, you know, I mean, people say luck and luck, whatever. I think it was good timing. You know, I was also, you're also success comes when you're prepared for the opportunities, you know? So it was just a lot of good timing. And then, um, I went back the next week and it happened to be a Nike tournament called New York versus New York. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's another legendary tournament that's held in, in New York city basketball parks by Nike every year, I think for the last three or four years. And just by chance, I happened to be there with, with Trevor in Northeast basketball club. And I'll never forget. He asked one of Jake's coworkers, Mikey, if it was, if it was okay, if I can photograph, I had Adidas on at the time. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know, like the thing is, I didn't know it was like a Nike tournament. I didn't understand what was going on. Oh, Lord. So he was just like, hey, listen, you can shoot from the stands. All right. I said, okay, cool. And then he, um, and then after the game, I apologized to him. And then I, I got his email and I was like, hey, here's the photos, man. Do whatever you want with them. And then from there, the relationship boomed. And then he introduced me. You no, know, then I did my first event with Game 7 Marketing. And then I, he, he introduced me to an agency called Victory based out of Vancouver. And then that, and then that, and then, excuse me, and then at that time, my good friend from high school, Sadat, got the job at Nike Basketball. So, like I said, and I wanted just to paint that picture because I think a lot of people, a lot of photographers will ask me now, how did it happen? And they think that I just would, I went to high school games and like some high school kid posted me and then it happened. Like, not. Nah, I just went. And at that time, no one was doing this shit. Like, Cassie Athena was doing it on the West Coast, but no one, like now, if you go to a, a high school game where I'm from, or anywhere now in the country, you mean you're you're in an area like that? It's like the NBA Finals with media. You know, it's, it's an influx of media outlet because they want. But at that time, no one was. In, where in my area, no one was doing that. I was literally the only photographer, and we had five, four or five McDonald's All Americans at the time. So I came in at a time where the social age for the social boom for grassroots basketball was about to happen, for from from a player perspective and from a media outlet perspective. And then I was right there with no one else. So it was, just a, it was just a really, really strong timing thing. With that being said, though, I worked my butt off and was like, just became obsessed with it and just kept going and going and going. I made a new Instagram page and I just started branding myself. But again, I was doing, I was going to all these high school games for free, shooting them, shooting them. They're only posting my stuff. So my page grew and grew and grew. And then I was, as I was doing that, I, I was learning how to move and, you know, getting, getting connected with brands and, and to create content. And then like that whole thing just kind of went like this and it just kind of matched up. So then I got to this point and then like, you know, I, you know, Lord willing, man, everything got busier and busier and busier. And as things got busier, I became more obsessed with like the craft of it. You know, like I didn't want to just be a high school basketball photographer. I wanted to shoot like global campaigns now, you know? So like I had new dreams and new goals. And I think that a lot, that work ethic and that dream matched up with how the, the like everything was going. So it kind of just like literally like just went all up together. Perfect people story. Started, yeah, people, yeah, it was like a perfect storm for me. And I think people would tell you, like even Jake, people will tell me like, yo, I don't know how you, how it happens so fast for you. And I don't know either other than that, like logistics, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's how I got to, to kind of where I was at now. You know, like I said, I mean, literally three years ago, like it was nothing, but now it's like, you know, it became such a, a cool, fun, amazing thing for me. And it's awesome to hear people like that, I, that are important people in this like, industry look at me and they're like, wow, man, this, this 
this kid's like the truth, you know. So it's always nice to hear that stuff. But yeah, it's been it's been like a perfect storm. Absolutely. Let's let's talk about you know societal issues of of anxiety and depression and like the importance of of good mental health. You know, from from what I've seen from you, the photography has been a great outlet for you and it's been a great way for you to express yourself. Can you talk about that journey and you know how you've progressed and and uh, really fought through? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's a, and I, I'm a big advocate in speaking on it. And, you know, sometimes people will say maybe I talk too much on it, but it's such a thing that so many people deal with, you know, um, and it's normal. It's okay to feel anxious. You know, I think that understanding that it's okay to feel that um, is the first step. And secondly, it's like, because I think that it's, it's drawn up that if you get anxious or whatever, that you're like, you're weird, you know? And I think for me, I was, I've been dealing with this since I was in high school and the, excuse me, high school going into college. So it's always been a part of my life in a sense, but when I take pictures and, you know, in hindsight, doing something that I truly love, it kind of like nullifies it in a way. But man, there's, there's times before shoots that I've literally like, I, I, I've like freaked out, you know, like there's, there's, there's multiple times that I remember I was having like episodes of freaking out, like before major shoots, like major athletes. So it's not something that like just went away just because I picked up a camera. I think I'm just learning how to deal with it and, and being able to speak on it and be okay with speaking on it has, has even helped me, you know? And I think as you know, you, as it's like life, you, you know, when you go through experiences, you're able to speak back on them and learn from your stuff. You know, I was telling, I was telling, um, uh, this, uh, I was, who else? Oh, yeah, I was talking about it actually last night with, uh, very close person to me and I, I was telling her I was like you either win in life or you experience you know there's no losing and I think that when you adopt that mindset your whole outlook will change you know so like I, I don't ever feel like I'm losing I'm either gonna win or I'm gonna just go through an experience so um, yeah that's that's been a little bit of like the journey I've been through and like I said it's, I like to speak on it just because I know I get a lot of feedback on that on my page, like a lot of messages like, Hey man, I'm going through that too. And that makes me feel good that, listen, I'm not, I'm not world famous, but it's nice to feel that people would feel like they can connect with me, you know, even though I'm, you know, quote unquote, just a photographer. Cause I think that it's looked at as like, Oh, you're just a guy that takes pictures. And I'm like, sure, whatever it is. But like, it feels good that, you know, I can use this platform to like do more than that, you know? Absolutely. Who's, Give me like a quote or advice or, you know, someone that's really, you know, helped you, you know, mature and progress through that. Through the anxiousness? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, a, a lot of, a lot of, I mean, my, my mom's been a great catalyst for me because I think that she's someone that I've kind of went through, went, went back to a lot when I would go through these things because yeah. it wasn't really, it wasn't really up until a couple of years ago that I really started opening up about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I think she's always been a big catalyst to me. And I think, um, Gary Vanderchuk, I think his mindset towards life really like inspired me, you know, of this whole, like, yo, you win and there's experience and it's okay to have down moments. Like, you know, people, we think that we have to have this chink and we have to be untouchable. And like, and I think that that's the connection. I had, I had a conversation with a, um, a trainer at a basketball park the other day. And he's like, yo, you know what I really appreciate you is that like, you're doing all this crazy shit that some of us would dream of and you're still going through this stuff. And I was like, yeah. And, and I was like, and I, and I actually, along with those two inspirations, like Kevin Love, I think Kevin, I think, Ke well, I think DeMar DeRozan might've said it first, but Kevin Love um, speaks on it. And then I, I would look at Kevin Love and I'm like, dude, this guy's hundred plus million dollars, NBA champion, you know, top, maybe top five, top 10 rebounder in history. Like just, you know, whatever it is. And he's going through this stuff. Think about that good looking dude. Like can model, can play, like got the life at his fingertips and he's going through this. So that, that must mean it's okay. And I did, I did one project with him and I don't like, you know, I, like I said, I pick my spots when I picked that, when I talk to athletes and stuff like that. But when I, I did a, I did a shoot with him and I, I never forget, I went up to him and I told him, I was like, Hey man, I want to let you know, I really appreciate what you did. Cause I go through really bad anxiety and like kind of hearing you talk about it, like let me know that it was going to be okay. And now I want to use that and, and dish and continue to send that message. And we chopped it up a little bit about that, you know? And it's just like, those have been kind of three, like, people that I've, that, that I've looked at that have inspired me and, like, kind of would get me through certain moments, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
the next thing kind of dovetails into that. You're, you're a genuinely nice guy in a very cutthroat business, you know, both photography and sports are, are, are very, very cutthroat. What have you learned about setting expectations? Setting expectations for like myself or? Yeah. For, for how people deal with you and just making sure that, you know, you are a nice guy, but oh, you, know, okay. you are still a businessman, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think, this is, and I hate to like kind of harp on this, but it goes back to experience. I've gotten to take an advantage plenty of times. Yeah. But if you don't go through that, you know, yeah, so I think dealing with, um, you know, being, continuing to stay true to yourself, be kind and deal with people in this cut, in this cutthroat industries, you got to kind of go through it. Like there's been multiple times that I've been, shafted underpaid overlooked or hey we don't have a budget for this and all that stuff if you don't go through that stuff then you won't understand how to handle it and i also think that's just part of the grind you know it's just it's it's no different than an aspiring basketball player like yo you're, you're training your butt off right you get cut from your team you're training your butt off you're not getting money oh you're this this, this aau team doesn't want you you got to keep pushing and pushing so i think that stuff inspired me that's one and two i never wanted to be i like being a good dude you know, I don't want, I like when people reach out to me and feel like they can talk to me because I'm normal. I'm not, I'm not, there's not going to be no athlete that I can shoot or no amount of money or no amount of Instagram followers that's going to change me to the core because I'm still the same small town kid who grew up with his best friends on the same street. Like I would never get away from that. And my dad and my mom, they always installed in me that you always have to like live below your means. You know, so I've always had that, mon that mantra in my head that living below your means and and just being kind to me is like the root to being successful. Like, is you're gonna, people are gonna wanna work with a cool dude or a cool girl or somebody that's reliable, trustworthy, like not gonna, you know, not weird. So I think just, I think not losing sight of who I was despite being able to be around such awesome things and work on such cool projects and exclusive, exclusive things, um, just being true to myself has helped me, you know, not switching up. Absolutely. Let's talk about that progression of, you know, in the beginning, you know, going and doing events for free and, you know, reaching out to athletes. So talk about how that has evolved over time to the, to the point where, you know, you are compensated or at the very least, you know, they tag you and stuff like that. Like talk about your relationships with the, the guys that you shoot. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, like I said, in the beginning, it was much easier because there was no one really doing it. So they were like, they were so happy to get content. You know, now we're in, we're in a day and age now that these kids have so much access to whatever photo video guy wants to come shoot them working out. Yeah. So they're less appreciative of it now, less tags. And I've also decided myself, you know, I've grown out of that in the sense of like, I'll do workouts for like players. I really like either care about or have a relationship with, but I'm not going to go chase some high school player. That's going to like act like his shit doesn't stink. You know, like, <laughs> There's a lot of that stuff, you know, they feel very entitled and, and it is what it is. But in the beginning, man, a lot of the, a lot of those, those guys, like, like I mentioned, Javon, Ron Harper, Khalil Whitney, Scotty, Brian, Nas Reed, all these guys, um, they were, they were loyal to me. Like, and we built a relationship because one, you know, again, I was chill and there was no one else going to these games. So we just built a rapport from that. Um, and I didn't really understand that you could make money from photography, from the sports world. Like I do now, now, I, now I understand. Yeah. Back then I was just shooting it because I just loved shooting hoops and I thought it was cool. But then when I started seeing what it could become is when I started changing my mind to like, oh, okay, like, let me brand myself. Let me brand my page. Let me, I don't want to just be a guy that's only sharing high school basketball players during a game. I got to tell the story because that's how you're going to get better and, 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 and sure. And, and, um, separate yourself from the pack because then as I was going 2018, 2019 like there were so many other photo and video like really piling on you know like i like it's like i told you there was so it was a year and a half that i was literally the only dude now yeah. you'll go now you'll go and anybody's shooting anybody's workout it's wild and, and not it doesn't bother me like i want everyone to eat but i'm just saying this is like these kids like they'll just take whatever they don't you know they're not even like they'll even take subpar content just to have the content it's like you know it's crazy but like you know, it's just the game that we are in now. It's very, very, very oversaturated. Yeah. It doesn't sure. mean you can't come out of it, though. Like, I hate when people, when I, when I, and I'll say this, when I, 
first wanted to do photo, I've had people tell me, yo, everyone's, there's so many photographers. How are you going to make it out of here? And I said, yo, so I'm just going to just kill and I'm just going to just be the best. <laughs> so you could make, even though it's oversaturated, it doesn't mean your dreams are shattered. I'm just saying that the, the co- you got to do something to separate yourself. Different. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What's, uh, what's been your favorite piece? Photo wise? I mean, photo, video, you know, what, what have you done? That, 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 I, that I've done, that I've done, right? Yeah. And I've done, um, my favorite piece. Okay. I did, um, yeah. So I had this, this photo up here of like Kevin Durant. Yeah. Yeah. I got a photo here of Durant. Right there. Yep. Yeah. He was, I was on this project, um, but he was flying first class and excuse me, he, he flew on his Alaskan airplane from LA to Oakland to Vegas. Yep. And they picked up high school. They surprised high school kids on the way. Mm-hmm. And like, I guess he was reading a letter from a fan there mm-hmm. and he just sitting there on his, um, you know, just, it just, it was just such like an organic moment. And I think for me, like that was one of my big, big first ones. Yeah. So that one would always sit with me. Excuse me. I did, a. Uh, I think that one's very special to me. Um, I did a, this project with Kawhi Leonard. That was real special to me. Cause that was very, that was one of my, um, this is like, well, this is one of the outtakes from it too. That's another Kawhi one right there. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That one's pretty special to me because it was one of my first global campaigns where it got blown up all over the world. Yeah. So I think that was a, that was a, a special, special moment. Um, so I would say like that Kawhi Leonard one, the correct, the excuse me, this Kevin Durant project. And I think in 10 years, this Zion in New York is going to be, Yeah. Uh, I think in 10 years that Zion that Zion in New York that I did here, his first time in New York City dunking. Yeah. Um, I think that one's going to be, I think as the time goes, it'll really like hold weight. Yeah. And that's what happens with photo too. It's like photo and video. Like it, there's a lot of dope shots, but depending on the trajectory of the person or the, or the team, it can yeah. really add value to like, you know, the images. So like he pans out like he's supposed to be like, I think in five, maybe even five years, you look back and that one would be like, Whoa, you got Zion in New York, like dunk like that. So um, I think those are three that stick out of my head. I have a, I have a couple things that were supposed to be released, but got held back because of um, the pandemic. Yeah. So I did this thing with this um, with a tennis player, Coco Golf. Okay. She's supposed to be like the next Serena, and then I did uh, something with Sydney McLaughlin. She's a um, she's a New Balance athlete. She's uh, supposed to be like the, supposed to be one of the best sprinters in the world, but the Olympics right. got pushed back. So there's yeah. a couple projects that like aesthetically, I'm like. I noticed a growth in myself, but they just haven't been released because of um, the pandemic. We'll, we'll be waiting for that for sure. I mean, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Either later this year, or early next year, and then hold on, last one. I did something with okay. Anthony Davis. I was pretty badass, actually. I kind of liked the way those came out too. Yeah. I can't lie, man. All this shit has been crazy. Now that I think about it, sometimes when I talk about it, I'm like, dang. <laughs> it is too different. Yeah, it's yeah. too different. Yeah. Let's talk about that, that piece that you put together for, you know, COVID in, in New York City, you know, and kind of yeah. for, for a time that was really the center of it, you know, in, in America as far as, you know, just as, there's so many people in such a concentrated area. Talk about, you know, shooting that video that you put together and um, kind of how you felt about it afterwards. Yeah, for sure. So another thing that like that one comes back to, to timing, right? Like if, if I was in, a, I mean, I'm in an area where it was at the height of a pandemic I would have done that video a month later it may, may not have like been as powerful yeah. but I did I did so March 7th was the last day I went so I had work everything shut down because I do a lot of sports obviously and listen everyone everyone's going through this so I'm not acting like I'm alone yeah. but the first thing that I thought about was like dude I was rolling like now what yeah like is this gonna come back like So it it almost felt like I started getting that same, I'm telling you, the same anxiousness that I was getting back in 2016 came back again. And it felt the same way. I was like, holy shit, what do I do? Like, I don't know what to do now. So that same panic and anxious feeling, I remember sitting on my couch wondering what to do. And I was like, you know what? Get back to what you used to get to. And And the first thing I said, I was, you know what? Go to the city and take photos. Let's just see what happens. So that's how I started first was taking photos in the city. And I went back another day, took photos of the city again, empty, Brooklyn Bridge, Times Square. I mean, you guys, you saw the photos. It's like all empty stuff. So it made me feel good. I was like, hey, listen, once a week, I'm going to go out to New York and take photos. Cool. I'll take that for now, right? Mm-hmm. My mind was feeling good. And, and then I went out again, and I was like, oh, let me take some GoPro phone, phone footage. 
and I don't, I don't do video at all. That's like the first video I've ever done. And I, I went to, and when I got home, I was like, man, this looks kind of cool. Like maybe I could put something together. And then that's how it kind of came together. And then I like, I wrote the spoken word and I spoke over it. And then like, as a few weeks after I started piecing it together and I started like pulling footage and then I got inspired again. So literally like March through April, I, I, I was like locked in again and it felt good, man, because one, I was doing, I felt an historic type of piece and two, my mind was clear. And it, like I said, even though I wasn't getting paid, but my mind was right. So it felt like the same grind that I, I had to restart back in 2016 in a way, you know, 2016, 2017, that's how it was like the same kind of grind. And then, man, I just, I dropped that shit and just, I didn't think anything of it, but it, it went crazy. Like my, I, dro I put it on Facebook. I got hundreds of thousands of hits. I mean, I got interviewed on CBS on TV for it. Like, yeah. you know, so many people f shared it and reached out to me about it. So I think it was crazy. And I think for me, I think that's going to be another thing in five, 10 years. I'll drop that again. And you're going to be like, whoa. So like to feel like a, to get us such a moment in time, yeah. it was awesome, you know? And especially because I thought I really epitomized, you know, New York, like the mentality, especially like New York City, it's just kind of the, the resiliency and, you know, the, the ability to kind of get through, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, get through whatever. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think in the, in the message I said, I said, Yo, you know, keep smiling and laughing, keep writing and dancing because together, um, well, well, something I said, something like, we'll get through it together. Point is that, like, keep doing what you love to do. Keep doing what you can do. Like, we'll get through this. Cause that's what I was feeling, you know, like, Hey, you can't just roll over and sit here. Just keep trying stuff. Keep doing, they keep doing things like we'll get through this. And so, yeah. And I think for me, it also showed me that like, man, yo, Jay, you can, you don't have to just take pictures and you can show yourself this other side of you, you know, like this podcast, spoken word, um, uh, video, show yourself a little more in the camera. So that's what I wanted to do. You know, that's my goal this year is to like, yo, be a little bit more in front of the camera and, 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 you know, use your platform. So I think it, it also sh showed a new side of me. So I was excited for that. I feel like with creativity, you know, especially with kids, you know, if they just are able to draw, they're able to express themselves in some way, you know, through sports and something. I think that builds that confidence that opens like that, that other, you know, kind of, I mean, part of your brain sounds dramatic, but it oh, just yeah. kind of opens things to, you know, change your perspective and, and helps outside of it, uh, for sure. No, for sure. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. Man. Let's talk about the uh, unreleased collection. You know, I know that's mm -hmm. really important to you, the, the art collection that opened in, in Jersey City last year. Talk about, you know, putting that together. And um, I heard you had a, a surprise team that you're pretty close with that, that pulled up for that one as well. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, so that, that was like a good that was another impulsive thing. And, and I, and I'll say this because I think more people think a lot of people think of good ideas, but there's the re the difference between me and them is that I I'll go through with it. Mm. So like, and I tell the kids, I'm like, if you want to do something, just do it. Like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, don't wait for the Pope. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Like just perfect it along the way. Cause if you keep waiting for that perfect moment in life, you'll never be able to, you'll always be waiting. You know, you're always going to be chasing this variable that you, you may never catch. And then before you know it, it's too late. So that, that collection, I just had a bunch of photos and I just wanted to get everyone together. And that's how it started. And then I was like, you know what, maybe I can tie in and raise money for mental illness. And then, you know, I can kind of tell my story through this gallery. So then like, my point is like, you know, like as I'm planning it, I'm seeing different levels. I can get bigger and bigger with this thing. You know, I had a great turnout. I think like 200 people raised a ton of money, donated it. I had this cool like wall build out with broken mirrors. And then I had obviously a lot of photos that I've never shared. And then a lot of um, around every few photos, I had messages of how I felt while I was at, that, at those moments when those photos were happening. So it's a very, very intimate setting. And that, that was like the first time I've like rapped for somebody in like 10 years. So I think everyone was like, because I, like I did like an opening spoken word. And then everyone was like, Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, so they, were like out. <laughs> they weren't ready for that. They weren't ready for that one. So yeah, that was, um, that was, that was just a cool moment. But again, it's just something that like, I like to try things because I don't want to live in regret. Yeah. So, you know, like whether it's a gallery or it's a video of me spoken word or if it's this pandemic or if it's this pandemic video, like it, it's just, if I want to do something cool and it makes me happy and I think it's for a good reason, I just do it. Even if it doesn't like come out, like how it's supposed to quote unquote come out, you know? Yeah. So yeah, so hopefully I can get something done. Well, you know, I'll see how next year goes and I would like to do something else, you know. Is that available online? 
What? The uh, gallery. Like a. Uh, like, like available to see. Yeah. I have a video of it, but I don't have like the photos aren't for sale. Is that, is that what you're asking? No, I was saying just so that someone could see the gallery without being there, so they could view yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you it, so you have a link. Yeah, awesome. it's, on my, it's on my Instagram. Yeah. Okay. What's something you've learned about an athlete or a professional while shooting them? Maybe you know. I know that you yeah, shot think, you know, um, LeBron James. You shot yeah. some famous tennis players. Uh, golf. I think Tiger Woods. I saw. Uh, I think about athletes are. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think something to learn about athletes is like one, you never know how they're feeling that day. You know? and, <laughs> And then I say this like we're, more, we're like we're with respect to them, like they're human beings in the sense of like I don't know, man. They can wake up. They could have came on a flight from east to from west to east, have a headache, got into a fight with their brother, and then they had to do this shoot, you know. Mm. So like I am, and I also understand that hey, they're getting paid a lot of money for this shoot, so they got to kind of do it. So I think it's understanding both both worlds and understanding how to move through them, you know. Like I said, sometimes I talk more than others. I just kind of feel it out. But either way, I always let them know, like, hey, if you don't want to do a pose or there's an idea here you don't like, you just tell me no and we keep it moving. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I learned a lot from them is that, you know, they're humans just like us. And sometimes they like, and not, there's a lot of them that are like, you know, like very like, oh, my, you know, my shit don't stink. Yeah. And there's, there's also a lot of great ones that are really nice and polite. And hey, man, thank you so much, you know. Talk so, about some of those. It's, it feels good when it's like that. Like, I mean, just off my head, like Victor Cruz, mm. former Giants receiver, he's like one of my favorite people. Yeah. Like we have, we have a relationship now. Like he's just a good human. Like, yeah. hey, man, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. This thing I did with Coco Golf, the tennis player. Guys, and she's young, you know, but she's like, thank you guys so much. This means so much. Like it's little stuff like that where you're like, you know, they're very appreciative. Like, hey, like everyone here is working towards a goal, you know? So I think mm. it's just nice to hear, hey, thank you, thank you. But I've learned for me, whether they say thank you or not, I don't let it get to myself. Like I'm there to do really, I want to create legendary images, let them look good, make whoever I'm working for look good and just keep it moving and keep the atmosphere fun. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm understanding that these people go through stuff all the time. And, you know, sometimes they may be in a good mood and sometimes they're not. I think it's just learning how to like move and balance and, and you know, respect that space, but also get what you need to get done. Also capture that energy. And also you know? capture them because you got to understand a lot of the shoots that I'm doing, especially as of late, it's not natural action. Like mm -hmm. this is me. Hey, we're going to put you, you know, in, in a group of people, we're going to pose this shot or, Hey, I'm gonna, I, we're going to have the ball like this or whatever here, or we're going to have you on the locker posted up, you know, like, yeah. so it's, it's more like, you know, maybe they don't want to do that stuff. So it's not like, it's not like I'm shooting, like, let's say like Anthony Davis in a game or like, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm reacting this one. I'm, I'm have to act this, you know, is that more difficult for you? I mean, I love it, man, but it's definitely, yeah. it's, to me, it's definitely, I mean, a game, I don't want to discount the game. The games are high stress, but yeah, like shooting like that. And like thinking, thinking of like creative, like lighting or poses or, or backdrops or stories, you know, for it. I think it's definitely, definitely a different atmosphere. You know, yeah. I love it. You know, I love both. I love game and this, but this one-on-one -on -one thing I love, like, it's, it's awesome because you're the one that has those images. Yeah. You know, from, uh, from my understanding, most of the work that you do, it's, it's still just you, you know, you don't really have, you know, you have guys that work for you from time to time, but it's not necessarily a team, you know? No, yeah. I think compared to something that you do like the victory collective. So talk about the difference between, you know, what, what you've learned being a part of a group as opposed to, you know, producing your own content. Yeah, for sure. I think, like I said, life is an experience and it's a, it's a learning experience. I think learning, working with, with, with other creatives and, and teams, like you see how things move and then obviously being able to do stuff yourself is obviously very important, you know? And I think that as I was growing through this, I was learning that like, Hey man, I had, I do have good ideas that I can bring to the table, you know? But, and it's crazy that that's, that's what I think this, that's what I think that we're going to enter. Like the, the people, are, the people that are going to get hired are people that can do this on their own mm. or like, or, you know, like they don't need a, a 10 guys holding lights and shit like that. You know, yeah. I, I was starting to get into that where there was like big production teams with like two techs, uh, a lighting guy. And cause you know, and that's, that's just how big campaigns work yeah. But now with all this stuff and the distancing, like you're going to have to be able to create these stories and do this stuff on your own. Yeah. And that's a lot of the reason why, like, I shared that pandemic video and I did that spoken word and I'm doing a vlog series that I'm going to release either Sunday or the Sunday after. Cause I want to show people that look, I can do this shit on my own. I, I mean, 
not that I don't want to work with anyone ever again. That's not the, what I'm saying is that like, Oh, look, like I'm capable of creating cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about the atmosphere, you know, at peach jam, you know, it's just, it's just different. I mean, you just oh, have yeah. to be there to experience, talk about the vibe, the energy, the players, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, man, peach jam. If, if you haven't, or you have been there, man, I, I, that's one of the most, and I should have mentioned that too, as one of the things that were really important to me, like being a part of that is like electric. Not, not only are you getting NBA talent at such a young age, but it's just everyone's in one fucking, I'm getting like goosebumps thinking about it. Everyone's in one like arena. You know, the players are walking in, they're getting cheered for, the, the talent is unbelievable. There's college coaches, there's, it's just such a raw dynamic. And I think that if you haven't hit Peach, it's like you're missing out. Like going to Peach, like I, that was one of the things that I was bummed out that I didn't get a chance to do this year. I was like, damn, yeah. that Peach Jam shit is awesome, man. <laughs> it's just like I said, it's, it's the purest form of just like get after it. You know, because everyone th is there is trying to get that college scholarship. Mm. And that, that, that one weekend, one day, that weekend, one session, that weekend can change a kid's trajectory. Literally it change the trajectory. Change your whole family's trajectory. It, it change your whole life. So I think that, so I think talent, the atmosphere, the rawness, and then the, like what's at stake is what makes it so exciting. Absolutely. Talk about shooting you know on the west coast and you know eventually you're able to expand into other areas and you know that energy is different than kind of the street ball the the new york city vibe talk about you know, the different environments you've been in and what you like about it and what you've learned from it yeah um you know it's, it's been a, it's been a uh, it's, i like that question it's been a blessing to kind of work all over the country just to kind of see like you said like just different vibes of different people like you know i come from an area where like you know they say that you know new york's the mecca i mean it's hard for me to not really agree with that because it just is what it is like Rucker and 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 that's the street ball aspect you know and then being able to I think for me being able to step into the street ball world step into the AAU high school world step into the regular high school world step into a college at Madison Square Garden and then also be blessed enough to step into like an NBA arena has really been able to despite where I'm at in the country has really been able to kind of like humble my perspective and appreciate different things and also see things differently because the way you shoot an NBA, and I, I'm not, I'm not that it's different, but it's just different atmospheres. It's like, like, you know, like, the, the, like I've, I've done Dykeman Park and a kid, a kid hits a game winning layup. The whole crowd will storm, you know, but you're not doing that. You're not doing that at, at an NBA level or a college level. I mean, you could do it at a college level, but no one's going to storm Madison square garden. If Duke beats Texas, Texas tech, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I think that being able to have had my foot, in all those different worlds has really made me become a better photographer and really appreciative of the, like the landscape of sports photography and hoops in specific. Last question. You may not have feel like you have made it, but, but what was the moment that you felt like you made it? Yeah. I think, see, like that's, it's so crazy. Like, Cause that, that's the issue. It's like, when have you made it? You know? And I remember I, I wrote something down on my board cause every year I'll write down like my vision board, what my goals I want to be. And I remember I told my dad, I was like, well, one day, like before I started doing all this stuff, I was like, one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to photograph LeBron. And I was like, dude, when I do it, I'm going to retire, man. I'm out, bro. <laughs> and I did it. And then I'm still here. And then I was, I was literally talking to my buddy Danny yesterday. And I was like, man, I, I, I was like, you know, part of me wants to step into music a little bit, like photographing music. I was, like, I was like, yo, I need to photograph Drake, man. And he's like, yo, one day it'll happen. I was like, bro, if it happens, I'm retiring. And it kind of brought me back to like that, like LeBron moment that I had. And it's like, when, when are you ever going to be satisfied and be like, dude, you know what? I made it, you know? I mean, I think it's good to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. But when are, you, when are we ever going to be like satisfied? Like, hey, we made it. So for me, it's like, I'm still chasing this. Like, I'm chasing me 10 years, 10 years from now. Mm. which is like a, like a, a crazy shit that I, that I, it's a psychotic thing that I'm dealing with, but that's, that's because I want to be legendary, you know? Yeah. I think this year, then this pandemic happened, but I, I think this year I, I started feeling it like, okay, I'm stepping into like a new level. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't think I'm at the level yet, but I, I think I definitely stepped into like a new level. I think a really powerful level. That I'm, and I think I'm right there. Like I'm flirting with like a really, really sh elite, elite type of company. Mm. Um, that's how I feel. Um, 
So yeah, I, don't, I didn't make it yet. <laughs> Maybe That's... next. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. Listen, I'm happy, and I love what I'm doing. So yeah, I did make it. But there's still me where I'm like pushing it more. You know. I think, I think you've people. made it in other people's eyes, but but to yourself, you you haven't. Yeah. You're not going I, to. You know, you're get, yeah, oh, never in constant to, pursuit. Yeah. You're in constant pursuit. Yeah. So I think I didn't make it. In a, in a certain aspect, but like I am really happy and I'm in love with what I do. So I am like, you know, I did make it because I'm like doing what I love and I'm being able to do it and yeah. I'm on my own time and doing cool shit. But like, I just want to keep going, you know, like the thing is to be successful and be legendary, actually be legendary. You got to be consistent. That's a fact. I could have done this for one year and been like, boom, boom. It's like a one hit wonder. But now I'm on year three. Like if I get to year five, year 10 and I'm doing shit like this, high level stuff, and then I'll, then I'll be looked at as like, okay, whoa, this, this is like big time now, you know? And then 20 years, then you're like, whoa, okay. Like he's got, you know, you got it. So I think for me, it's just continuing to chase the consistency of being, doing great work, being a great person and just doing cool stuff. Absolutely. All right. Well, you have the floor. Is there anything you want to talk about or um, <laughs> anything you got up next? I mean, I don't have anything yet. You know, no, no, I have no, nothing in the works. Like I said, I'm just shooting workouts and stuff, but I guess I'll just leave it on this note you know, whoever listens out here, like whatever, whatever audience you have, man, if you want to, whether it's photo, video, music, whatever it is you want to do in life, just give it a shot. And I, like I said, you don't w win or lose in life. You just win or you experience. And I think that a lot of young kids um, aren't educated on that. And hopefully like you can take my story and see that I'm no different than you. Like, you know, I didn't have a background. I didn't come from some like crazy area. I don't, I didn't come with some like backing of money. I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't like a, fan, a, a NBA player that took me under my wing and was like, hey, follow him. Like, work hard, be a good person, work even harder than that. And I think the good things will come for you. And if things don't happen for you at 22 or 25 or even 30, you can't quit. You know, you gotta, you gotta continue to, to go. And I told, I told, uh, I told, I told someone, I said, if, if I told you that at 32 or 35, your dream job would happen for you, what would you say to me? She, she said, I would stick it out. So I think that not, just trust the timing in your life and, and, and where you're meant to be in your life is you're there for a reason. So if it doesn't happen for you, when you think you should happen, doesn't mean that you should give up. So I'll leave it at there. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. For, thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah, you too. Thank you for having me and I appreciate it. And if you guys wanted to follow me, uh, my ad is um, at Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-I-E, Izquierdo. And that's the same as my website. So I appreciate you guys. And like I said, anyone who listens to this and wants to reach out and chat or ask questions, you know, feel free. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Take care. Go down, brother.